Welcome into NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey. It took longer than we thought it was going to, but the five open NFL head coaching positions have been filled. We're going to break down all five hires and grade them as well. The moves made. Jonathan Gannon, the last one, as following the Eagles' heartbreaking Super Bowl loss, they actually lose both coordinators. Gannon goes to Arizona. Shane Steichen goes to the Indianapolis Colts. D'Amico Ryans, the last three have all been known for a while, leaves the Niners' D.C. job, takes the Houston Texans gig, the Broncos land Sean Payton, and the Panthers hire Frank Reich. Let's break down all five, beginning with the most recent one. And I'll preface this off the top, that head coach hires in general are very difficult to actually get right. And a big reason why is because the things that make you a successful coordinator which is game planning, designing, etc., don't always relate to what makes you a successful head coach. They are two very different jobs, even though some head coaches still call the plays that respective side of the football. So the stuff that gets you hired doesn't always result in you being a good head coach. Why there are some coaches that are not good coordinators, honestly, and some coordinators who are not good head coaches. The hiring of Gannon has some concern going on because he... There are some Eagles fans who do, do not love him. Uh, fairly quick rise, two years as the Eagles defensive coordinator, Colts DB's coach. Remember, the Colts are just, are just trading coordinators and coaches at this point. Frank Reich, then uh, Shane Steichen, and then et cetera. It's kind of been a fun little back and forth. Uh, uh, Nick Sirianni back and forth on that front there. Assistant DB coach for the Vikings, so a quick rise. And kind of a surprise hire, uh, to be honest, at least for me. Because Gannon was not a pre-Super Bowl interview. And he sticks around in Arizona for two days afterwards. Gets the job. Not finalized, but they're working out five-year deals. Right to be mentioned, so not quite pen to paper. But, like, you know, they've this deal is done here. My grade, you guys can grade all the hires in the comments, by the way. I'm going to give it a C. Again, I, I don't know if he was a great defensive coordinator. And that's kind of all we have to judge on this hire, which... Makes it tough and why so many grades look really dumb three years. Now, it might be the same case here with Gannon or any other other hires I grade. I do get a, a red flag raised when Eagles fans, even the smart ones that I know, don't aren't like, oh, oh no, and they're not in shambles about it. So I don't love the Gannon hire. Uh, yeah, rough super swing. It's not why. It's just that a lot of talent on that team. How much was him? How much was the Eagles just overall roster? We're going to break down the other four hires, but first, today's pinned comment is to pick the best head coach hire. ARI for the Cardinals and Gannon. IND for the Colts and Shane Steichen. HOU for the Texans and Nico Ryans. DEN for the Broncos and Sean Payton. CAR for the Panthers and Frank Reich. It's the pinned comment on today's video, so head down there, head to that pinned comment, especially if the ad break plays here on YouTube, and pick which head coach hire you thought was the best one this cycle. To Indy we go. We're going in reverse order of the hires because that's more fun, right? Shane Steichen was the Eagles' offensive coordinator. The Colts did a massive coaching search. I wonder if just to get as many options in front of Jim Irsay that weren't just Jeff Saturday. I actually liked what he did in, in L.A. as the O.C. That regime gets fired, goes to Philly. I loved a lot of what I saw on offense. And Sirianni gets credit, too. I think Shane Steichen does as well. Q quarterback coach for the Chargers, too. Again, quick rise for the Eagles. The fun fact is that all five coaches hired have at some point as a player or as a coach been an Eagles member of that organization, which is just kind of wild to think about there. My grade is a G, not a typo. It stands for thank God it's not Jeff Saturday. Indy fans, I am happy for you. i got several friends who are Colts fans and or cover that team, and I know how much they did not want Jeff Saturday. Not going to grade on a curve for that because... That uh, would have been an F. That would have been a joke of a hire. I'm giving it an A-, though. I like a lot of what Shane Steichen has done for years now. I thought the Panthers might get him. Indy hiring, hey, you know what? That's just as good. Similar boats. Ursay kind of mentioned very publicly about drafting a QB. Draft a QB. Let Shane Steichen develop him. See what happens. I, it, there's always risk involved. I like this hire for Indy, even if it is back-to-back -back Eagles OCs who get hired uh, as, as the Colts head coach. I want you to be mean in the comments section. Of the five hires, which one was the worst head coaching hire? It's not going to be the next one for, I think, most people, but I want to hear from you guys, so get in the comments section. Let me know.
The Houston Texans. I thought they were going to get Gannon. Well, I, in the end, I kind of got like the five coaches right, just all the wrong spots. Not the first time, not the last. I love the hire of D'Amico Ryans. A rapid ascent for, I thought, the best defensive coordinator in the NFL. I love what Ryans does, the adjustments he's made, and he's back home in Houston. A franchise that hired Lovey Smith and David Culley in back-to-back -back years, fired them after one year because those guys weren't good coaches to begin with. Houston landing D'Amico Ryans, poaching him from the Niners, I think is the best coaching hire in this year's cycle. I, I had wondered if Ryans was going to wait for a job. A-plus grade for me. I am a huge fan of D'Amico Ryans. If I'm wrong, you know what? I, I would risk it all on Ryans. I love the fit specifically for Houston, and that's what matters when it comes to grades, right? Ryans is, is, is a Houston guy. He played for the Texans. There was the whole lawsuit of the injury that kind of, I think, burned the bridge for a little bit there. They rebuilt it. You get some stability with a promising, young, I think, great defensive-minded coach. I think is a great leader of men, too. For what Houston needed, they got it the best way they possibly could have. I love this hire for the Houston Texans. I will make note, by the way, NFL Daily Live again on Wednesday. Two live shows this week. Welcome to the offseason. Make sure you don't miss out. I'll be back live on Wednesday. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at chat sports. The Denver Broncos next up here. This one is a bit more of a complicated grade. They got Sean Payton, who I think is probably the best head coach in Canada out there. But you had to trade for him. And also the way you got there was really ugly. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing in the end. It's a results-based business at the head coaching spot. For all the back-and-forth, weird route Denver went to, they wanted D'Amico Ryans. They missed on him. They went after John Jim Harbaugh. Maybe missed on that one there, too. Very weird search for Denver. Landing on Sean Payton, though, is not that bad of, of an end result if that's your fallback option. But it did cost you a first-round pick. And that is a lot to give up for slanderous comparison alert, um, Cajun Mike McCarthy. Their resumes are identical. They're, they're almost the exact same resumes now. Rosters and quarterbacks are all different. I get all of that. He's been immensely successful. By the way, this, this also makes uh, Pete Carroll cheesehead Mike McCarthy, so just keep that in mind. Um, but they're all, they're all the, same, the same resumes. Great, great quarterbacks for the most part. One Super Bowl and then kind of some disappointment elsewhere different ways of losing Sean Payton it's a low bar to clear I know is an unquestionable upgrade over Nathaniel can't hack it that one I, I was convinced was they're gonna go get Aaron Rodgers they don't they get Russell Wilson it was a disaster from the start Sean Payton's had a long successful coaching career I am hesitant though to give up the first round pick that does complicate this grade so I will do the coward's way out. It's an A for the coach. I love the coach hire. For the trade, uh, not nearly as much. That's kind of more of a C-minus trade. Average amount, you're in the B, B-plus range, give or take, if you want to emphasis more on the coach side. In the end, this hire comes down to, hey, short term, can you fix Russ? Because if you can't fix Russ, uh, Sean's going to be waiting for a few years to get back on top. Do you think that will happen? Why for yes and for no? Will Sean Payton be able to fix Russell Wilson, who looked a little bit cooked last year. Why for yes and for no. Let's go to the Carolina Panthers to wrap things up. The first head coaching hire, Frank Reich. I like it. The Panthers needed stability. They want to find a new quarterback that killed the previous regime. He was last the Colts head coach. Minor typo there, my bad. Reich also played for the Panthers, by the way, in 1995. The great trivia answer that he is, by the way. I don't blame Frank Reich for what went down at the end in Indy. 3-5-1, and one, I am still convinced he was somewhat sabotaged. Uh, ownership slash GM makes him play Sam Ellinger, which, like, he's not good. And then they bring back uh, Saturday, who was allowed to watch practice tape with the owner. Like, what are we doing out there? That is, that is wild to me. It all fell apart when they get blown out by the Jags in the final week of, uh, of the season 2021 Oh, with Carson Wentz gets run out of town, bodied by the owner. Then he was, you know, bad in Washington. But Reich wanted Carson Wentz. They kept going the veteran QB. If they had brought back Phil, or Phillip Rivers, it might have been okay in 2021. But it just didn't have enough time there in the end. 
So I'm down giving Reich a second chance. I think he'd be a good fit for some stability needed in Carolina. Hopefully it's more like 2020 and 2018 than the end of it for him in Carolina. My grade? It's an A-. minus. I thought about B-plus here, too, give or take there. Again, I'm not blaming Frank Reich for the Indy issues. I'm not. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's his fault. I think there are other issues there, but he has to get the quarterback spot right. If he doesn't, it's going to end just like it did in Indy.